This year in baseball, there has been lots and lots of amazing players. And with us getting closer and closer to the halfway point in baseball, it had me thinking about some of the best players at each position. And that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. I'm going to be going over the best player at each position so far in 2022. And before we get started, this was very tough because obviously I'm only picking one player at each position and there's lots of good players around baseball, so if I missed out on anyone, let me know in the comments. So with that in mind, let's hop right into the video. Getting started off at the catcher position, I have Wilson Contreras. Contreras has been arguably Chicago's best offensive bat as so far in 43 games, he's hitting 278 to go along with 9 home runs and 21 driven in. He's also been a pretty solid defensive catcher behind the plate throughout his career and the same could be said about this year. If he keeps this up, he could be well on his way to his third career All-Star game. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Contreras hit 30, maybe even 35 home runs this year because in the past he's had some pretty decent power behind the plate. So while Chicago hasn't been great as a team, Wilson Contreras has definitely stood out as a whole and I think up to this point in the season he's been the best catcher in baseball. Moving on to first base, I have Paul Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt has been on a tear to start the season as you can make a legitimate argument that he's been the NL MVP up to this point. So far in 50 games, Goldschmidt's hitting 349 to go along with 12 home runs, 47 RPIs, and a league-leading 1057 OPS. If Goldschmidt keeps this up and the Cardinals stay towards the top of the NL Central, I wouldn't be surprised to see Goldschmidt win his first career MVP award. He's been a lot of fun to watch up to this point, and I really do hope he keeps this up because, in my opinion, Goldschmidt is well overdue for that MVP award. I think he should already have one in his career. Now, I was pretty close to putting Pete Alonso at this spot, but I think Goldschmidt has just been on a different level lately. I mean, the guy's hitting 349, which leads all of baseball, and like I said before, he's also leading the league in OPS. So Goldschmidt has been so fun to watch, and I think he's been the best first baseman in baseball up to this point. Moving on to second base, I have Tommy Edmond. This one was really tough because I was very, very close to putting Trevor Story. But I ultimately went with Edmund because I think he's been more consistent all year long. So far in 51 games, Edmund is hitting 281 to go along with 4 home runs, 22 RBIs, 14 stolen bases, and a 766 OPS. He's played mostly second base, obviously, but he's also played shortstop and a little bit of outfield, so that even makes him more valuable. He's been hitting towards the top of the lineup for St. Louis all year long, and he's been a huge reason why Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado have been getting so many RBI opportunities. He just seems to always find his way on base somehow, whether it be a walk or a single the other way, and then happens to seal second base, and then from there, Goldschmidt and Arenado do the rest. So Edmund has been amazing this year. I definitely think if he keeps this up, he's going to make the all-star team, and I think he's been the best second baseman in baseball. Moving on to shortstop, I have Francisco Lindor. This one was really a toss-up between Trey Turner and Lindor, but I ultimately went with Lindor. So far in 53 games, Lindor is hitting 256 with 8 home runs, 43 RBIs, 7 stolen bases, and a 772 OPS. After a disappointing first year last year in New York, Lindor looks like he's back to his old self. He's one of many stars on New York that has come out playing very well, and he's been a huge reason why the Mets are off to such a hot start. And with what we've seen in the past from Lindor, I definitely think he's going to keep this up all year long, and I think he could come close to 30 home runs and 30 stolen bases. So all in all, Lindor has been a very good shortstop this year, the best in baseball in my opinion. Moving on to third base, I have Jose Ramirez. As I'm sure many of you know, third base is one of the most stacked positions in all of baseball. And as good as the position is, I still think Jose Ramirez is the best third baseman in the game today. And I think the same can be said about this year, as in 47 games, Ramirez is hitting 295 to go along with 13 home runs, 52 RBIs, 7 stolen bases, and a 1024 OPS. As expected, he's been far and away the best offensive bat on Cleveland. And in the past, Ramirez has put up similar numbers like this, so I think he's fully capable of keeping this up all year long, and he could very well win the AL MVP award. He's always been a very, very underrated player because he plays in Cleveland and he's not necessarily the most exciting player in the game, but his play does the talking. I also want to mention Manny Machado. He's been outstanding this year for San Diego, and I definitely think he's a close second behind Jose Ramirez. Moving on to left field, I have Jerickson Profar. Now, Profar might not come to mind when you think of the best left fielders in baseball, but left field has been relatively thin this year. But that's to take nothing away from Profar as he has been outstanding so far for San Diego and he's been a huge reason why they've been so good so far. In 51 games, Profar is hitting 236 to go along with 6 home runs, 25 RBIs, 4 stolen bases, and a 730 OPS. 
Being a former top prospect in all of baseball, a lot of pressure has been on Profar throughout his career. And he hasn't necessarily lived up to the hype, but so far later on in his career, he's been very good. Definitely not what was initially expected out of him, but by no means has he been a bust. In fact, he's been a very good major league player over the past couple of years. He's been leading off this year for a very good San Diego team that could challenge Los Angeles for the NL West. So all in all, Profar has been a very important piece for San Diego so far, and he's been the best left fielder in baseball in my opinion. Moving on to center field, I have Mike Trout. Coming off an injury-shortened 2021 campaign, Trout has came back this year and looked like the Mike Trout we have come to know. He's been one of the best players in baseball, as so far in 48 games he's hitting 285 to go along with 13 home runs, 28 RBIs, and a 987 OPS. The Angels got off to a very hot start, and unfortunately they have fallen off a bit recently as they've lost 9 straight games, but Trout has been consistently great all year long. So it looks like Mike Trout is well on his way to yet another all-star appearance and could even be in the MVP conversation if he keeps it up. Trout is a generational talent. While he might not be the most exciting player to watch, he's definitely one of the best players of this generation. So Trout has been amazing yet again this year, and I think he's been the best center fielder in baseball up to this point. Getting on to right field, I have Mookie Betts. This one was as hard as it gets because obviously we have Aaron Judge in right field as well who leads all of baseball with 20 home runs and has been outstanding. But I think Betts slightly outedges him because I think he's just a little bit better of a player. So far in 50 games, Betts is hitting 308 with 16 home runs, 36 RBIs, 6 stolen bases to go along with a 998 OPS. And defensively in right field, he's as good as it gets. He's been dominating all year long, and he's been just absolutely on fire, and it looks like he could be well on his way to winning another MVP award. The Dodgers currently have the best record in all of baseball, and if they keep it up and Mookie Betts keeps it up, he's probably going to win the MVP. So Mookie Betts is doing Mookie Betts stuff this year. We know that he's one of the best players in baseball, and he's reminding everyone of that. Getting on to the DH position, I have Bryce Harper. Now, Harper is typically in right field, but for the majority of the season this year, he has been Philadelphia's DH. And he's been on fire all year long, as in 46 games, he's hitting 308 to go along with 12 home runs, 36 RBIs, 6 stolen bases, and a 972 OPS. Every year in Philadelphia, Harper just seems to be getting better and better. Unfortunately for Harper, the Phillies have been god-awful this year, as they recently just fired Joe Girardi, so maybe things will start to look up with a new manager. But with all these managers over the past couple seasons in Philadelphia, it has clearly not affected Bryce's play. He's been very, very good this year, and I think he's been the best DH in baseball. I also have to give props to Jordan Alvarez, because in reality, Bryce Harper isn't a DH regularly, but this year he has been. Um, but in reality, Alvarez is the best DH in baseball. He's been playing amazing all year long. Now getting on to the best starting pitcher in baseball this year, I have to go with Nestor Cortez. This one was obviously very hard because there's been so many good pitchers across baseball, but I think Cortez stands out. So far in 60 innings, Cortez is 5-1 with a 1.5 ERA to go along with 68 punchouts and a .87 whip. He's been consistent all year long as he's been dominating all year for New York. And Cortez has been pretty decent in the past, but nowhere near what he's been this year. Cortez has been a very good story as this year, in my opinion, he's been the best pitcher in baseball up to this point on the best team in baseball. And getting on to the best reliever in all of baseball, I'm going with Josh Hader. I really couldn't go anywhere else with this one because Hader has yet to allow a run this year. The fact that we're in June and I'm able to say that is just ridiculous. So far in 17 innings this year, Hader has locked down 18 saves where he has 26 punchouts, a 0 ERA to go along with a .6 whip. So all Milwaukee pretty much has to do is get a lead into the ninth inning and it's basically game over. Hader has been as automatic as it gets this year and there's no doubt in my mind he's been the best reliever in baseball. And I also want to give a quick shout out to Clay Holmes who has been dominant all year long for New York as he has a .35 ERA so I had to give him some credit as well. So there you have my best player at every position up to this point in 2022. Let me know what you guys think down below, and as always, if you guys do enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe. And lastly, I want to thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.